guys and welcome back to Navaina. Today we are talking about PCR, polymerase chain reaction. Now chain reaction is something when something is uh, happening over and over again. So it's a chain reaction of DNA synthesis or a specific uh, region of DNA gets uh, amplified or replicated over and over again in vitro. Okay, so we have our DNA and when in lab we are trying to amplify the specific region, we are going to increase the number of copies of this particular region is called PCR. That's the technique and PCR was given by Carrie Malise in 1985. Now before I go ahead, why do I need to do this? Why do I need multiple copies? And when I say multiple, it's generally millions of copies of a particular region of DNA. Why do I need to do this in lab? Let's say for example, you are a researcher who is working in the field of genetics. You want to understand a sequence of a specific DNA region. You want to understand the function of this particular gene. You want to see what kind of a mutation is there in this particular gene. This sample could have come from a bacteria or from a plant or from a living cell. From a patient, let's say for example, you are a person who studies a certain mutation occurring in some kind of a condition and you have collected sample from a patient. Now you cannot, you know, keep on going and pricking a patient. You have a limited amount of sample in, in case that is available to you. And from this limited sample, you want to do carry out so many tests or studies. So what do you do? You do PCR. You increase the number of copies that you have in this particular uh, sample, the number of copies of that particular segment of DNA that you want to study. Let's say for example, um, in case of field of forensics, you have found a sample at a crime scene that you suspect belong to a criminal. So this sample is going to be actually a very small sample. So you cannot directly take this into study because you want to identify a criminal. So what do you do? You need to amplify the DNA sample that you have found at the location, at a crime scene. So you go for PCR. You amplify the DNA and when I, when I say amplify the DNA, generally it's a specific region of DNA that we are going to target. Okay, so that is what a PCR is. Simple terms, you need to synthesize multiple copies of a specific DNA region in vitro in lab. So generally this happens in test tube of course. So what all do you need? Let's say for example, you're going to do a PCR. What are you going to put in the test tube? So first and foremost, what you need is a DNA itself, a template DNA. What do you want to amplify? That target DNA sequence. So you have to have your sample or a template DNA that you want to amplify. And this is generally going to be a double-stranded DNA. So your template DNA that is double-stranded now, how can you amplify a DNA? What is the basic rule that we know about DNA replication? You need a DNA polymerase, an enzyme that is going to amplify or replicate the DNA. So you need a polymerase enzyme, a DNA polymerase enzyme. Now this is going to happen under lab condition and we are going to use a higher temperature to carry out the steps. We'll come to it later. So in short, we are going to use higher temperature. In our body, the temperature is about 37 degrees centigrade. But in this case, we are going to use much higher condition, much higher temperature. So you need a kind of enzyme that works at a higher temperature that is heat stable. And for this, we use enzyme from a bacterium called Thermus aquaticus, which is found in hot springs. A very high temperature environment it, it, it actually is a heat tolerant bacterium so we isolate a polymerase enzyme from thermus aquaticus because it can uh, work efficiently at a higher temperature they're heat stable 
and the enzyme of the polymerase is called tech polymerase of course for the obvious reason because it is um, isolated from thermus aquaticus and like uh, DNA polymerase in our body it is also going to synthesize the DNA in 5 prime to 3 prime direction all this we are coming to it in just a moment so you're going to add your DNA polymerase here it is tech polymerase now you have DNA and you have polymerase enzyme what do you need you need a primer because the DNA polymerase cannot synthesize a new strand unless it has a uh, pre-existing information so you need primer a short fragment of nucleotide over here that can bind to each strand so you need two types of a primer which can bind to upstream and downstream both the strands of separated DNA template so we'll be needing primers next DNA is there enzyme is there primer is there you need the nucleotides you need the nucleotide bases the NTPs because without that what a polymerase is going to add so you need the NTPs the NTPs that can be added to primer 3 prime OH end so you need all the building blocks of DNA the NTPs now all this is happening in test tube so you know you can not just directly add all the sample and everything in the test tube you need to have a buffer which makes sure that all the conditions the right conditions are maintained for everything to work and of course you need cofactors for your enzyme to work so in short you have added everything in the test tube your template DNA the target DNA sequence that you want to study your polymerase that is tech polymerase because we are we need a heat stable polymerase you have your primers and you have your DNTPs added now let's see what happens exactly in PCR how the amplification occurs so this is what happens in PCR you have added your uh, double stranded DNA that is your template DNA which is a double stranded DNA First, what you need to do is you need to separate these two strands and in PCR we use heat to separate or to break the hydrogen bonds and separate the two strands. So we increase the temperature to 96 degrees centigrade. This will be only for I think 30 seconds, not more than that because we don't want to denature the phosphodiester bond and further go on denaturing our DNA or damage the DNA. So for a brief amount of time, you expose you give the high temperature of 96 degrees centigrade so the hydrogen bonds will be broken and two strands of DNA will be separated so this step over here this first step where you want to separate the DNA is called denaturation because you are breaking the hydrogen bonds with the help of high temperature so it is called denaturation that is the first step of PCR once both the strands are separated we want the primer to bind so the primer annealing that means binding of primer to these separated strand that will happen once we bring down the temperature to 55 degrees centigrade now because the primer are shorter sequences compared to this bigger region before these two single strands can come and bind to each other primer will come and bind because they are the shorter sequences of nucleotide so when you bring down the temperature in the second step in the annealing step it is a primer that is going to bind to your separated strand once the primer is bound the third step is you want to extend this particular primer so primer extension we have to carry out and for that we will increase the temperature up to 72 degrees centigrade now this is a temperature which is optimum for the tech polymerase to carry out the polymerization to extend the DNA. So we have increased the temperature to 72 degrees centigrade now and tech polymerase will come and start adding the nucleotide at the 3 prime OH end of the primer. Okay, both the side. So the tech polymerase will start adding the nucleotides and synthesize this new strand in 5 prime to 3 prime 
direction. Now this is the end of cycle 1. What do you get at the end of cycle 1? You had a DNA sequence or DNA template that got doubled, right? The number of DNA got doubled at the end of one PCR cycle. You denatured by increasing the temperature at 96 degrees centigrade, then annealing, primer annealing by bringing down a temperature a little bit so primer can bind to the separated strands. Then we increase the temperature up to 72 degrees, which is a great temperature for tech polymerase to extend or synthesize this new strands. So at the end of the first cycle, you have the DNA that is doubled. This will be repeated over and over again for a quite a few number of times. So what you will have in the end, multiple copies of DNA from your sample. So you have millions of copies of DNA made at the end of PCR, repeated PCR cycles. Now at the end of PCR, you had put a test tube, you know, maybe you had put a couple of test tubes with your sample and when you take it out, it is going to be the same thing. How would you know that your DNA, uh, your region of your interest has been amplified, whether you have a clear PCR uh, result or not? And that is done by use of gel electrophoresis. So what we do is, we do a gel electrophoresis where we use a DNA ladder or a DNA standard where known uh, DNA base pairs, the sample would have known DNA base pairs uh, already present in a sample. You run that DNA ladder. So you'll have maybe 100 base pair, 200 base pair, 300, 400, 500 base pair. Clear cut ladder of your standard will be there. And you run your result of your PCR. Whatever you found that result, you run in a well. Now you are expecting, you know what you are expecting. So you would find maybe you had a, a sequence that you were interested of somewhere around 200 base per you. So you will see a clear cut band in the gel electrophoresis. Suppose if I had not done uh, targeted, if, if there was something wrong in my PCR, I could have got a smeared result. You might have seen images of a PCR result where you have a smeared result. It is not a clear cut band. So that's, that's an indication that there is something wrong, you need to do the troubleshooting, go ahead and figure it out what went wrong. So generally this is how the uh, result of PCR is read by the help of gel electrophoresis. We take the result after the PCR cycle, run it on the gel and see whether we get a clear band on whatever we were expecting. We would approximately know what we are aiming for, what is the size of the fragment that we are looking for. So. That's how you read the PCR result. So basically this is what happens in PCR. Uh, as I said, the components, you have a template DNA, whatever you are trying to study. You need a heat stable enzyme, check polymerase, you will be needing primers, nucleotide bases and right conditions to carry out the reaction. You put it in a test tube, uh, put it in PCR machine, there will be series of heat, there will be series of temperature changes. And the PCR will have three steps, denaturation, annealing and extension. Denaturation happens at a pretty high temperature, 96 degrees centigrade for a very brief amount of time, about 30 seconds so that it breaks the hydrogen bond and two strands can be separated. Once it is separated, we bring down the temperature to 55 degrees so that the primer can bind. So the primer will bind at 55 degrees centigrade and then we increase the temperature to 72 degrees centigrade which is a great condition for tech polymerase to synthesize the new strand in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. We keep on repeating the cycle so that we get multiple copies of the target DNA region. So I hope this was easy for you to understand and I'll see you in the next video. Until then keep learning.